The fact that I'm even here today is uh, a testament to how excited I am about today's show. And really, I, I've been up all night. Many of you know that uh, we lost superhumanradio.com. Let's just say for to be tasteful that it's been hijacked by somebody who wants to then lease it back to me for $3,500 a month. So we've moved on to superhumanradio.net. The process is a lengthy process. Anybody who knows about this kind of stuff knows what I'm talking about. And so... Uh, we are in the process right now of getting the website back up. I've been up all night. I'm exhausted, but I am so excited about today's show. And let me tell you why. And please, those of you watching on Facebook Live, let me know that the audio is okay because I'm doing something I hate doing. I've got Dr. DePasquale on a phone line and me here on the video side. And getting the audio right is is a trick. So please give me feedback early on in the show. Um. Everything today is about keto. You know what? If you open up a car dealership, Bill, Bill, Ford's, uh, 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 Bill Ford's Pontiac, and you're not doing good, just add keto Pontiac to the sign, and you will automatically get people because keto has become what people like to say a lifestyle. Anytime a nutritional protocol takes on a lifestyle, it immediately becomes tainted by dogma. You have people out there that eat that way, regardless of whether the original reasons they were eating that way don't appear, but they stay with it anyway because it's a lifestyle, something to talk about when you're doing your, your, your workout of the day at CrossFit. You know, oh, I'm keto, you're keto, oh, I'm keto, you're keto. So I wanted to do a sensible show about the ketogenic diet before it became the mass hysteria that paleo used to be, but now has come down to earth. And I, I really don't need to think of anybody else but my guest. Because 40 years ago, he was ridiculed for teaching athletes to leverage the ketogenic diet. And the reality is that he was right back then, but he did things differently that you're going to hear, that you don't hear in mainstream keto discussions. Dr. Mar Di Pasquale looks at evolutionary influences and the ketogenic state, which when you, when you abandon that, you lose sight of why you're doing keto. Now, I'm going to say this up front, and then I'm going to bring him on. What we're going to be discussing today has nothing to do with keto for cancer. Keto for seizures or keto for autoimmune disease because that is a therapeutic diet and it's no longer the goal of the diet simply to produce great nutrition and, and, and overall robust health. It's designed to specifically target something, some pathology that's gone wrong in the body over whatever else it may be doing good or bad for the rest of the body. So I want to reach the other 99% of people who do keto because they want to lose body fat. And they want to affect performance in some way, shape, or form. There's nobody else who knows about this like my guest, Dr. Mauro Di Pasquale. How you doing, Mauro? Okay, did I, did I go wrong with what I was just saying? No, no, not really. No. I mean, the whole business of the keto diet started a long time ago, um, back in 1900. The no breakfast diet, uh, you know, sort of the fasting and all that uh, increases, uh, of course, ketone production, et cetera. You know, the uh, original theory behind the uh, ketogenic diet uh, and what many label as the Atkins diet um, was basically for weight loss. Um, the weight loss occurred, they thought, both by uh, induction of ketosis 
uh, and associated loss of energy when you excrete it, the ketones in the urine. So you lost energy just to pissing it out, so to speak, you know? Right, um, right. So, and, and also they suspected that um, it, it was obviously it was an alternate fuel for the brain, more so than muscle, but because the muscle mass is so much greater, there's a lot of ketones used up by the muscle. It's, it's a complex, complex equation as to whether or not the new fad is going to become solid as far as results and, and, and research, or whether it's going to fall flat in space. But um, I think it has benefits, some benefits, and I also think it has some um, counter benefits. Okay. So when we talk about the Atkins diet, I, I feel, and I'm going to put words in your mouth, and you can say, Carl, that's not right. Uh, but I feel that while Atkins was a high protein first fat guy, you were a high fat protein uh, for uh, a high fat first protein guy, and I and I saw that with athletes I've read about that you've worked with, that when it came time to increase their calories, you brought their fat up. You didn't immediately go to protein. Is that am I incorrect in that that assessment? I don't know if this should be, you know, in this part of the uh, discussion. But the interesting thing is, people are kind of obsessed with um, sort of the urine, urinary ketones, as against uh, ketonemia, which is the ketones in, in the blood. Um, if you're utilizing, if you have, if, if you're producing a high number of ketones um, for whatever means, whether it's through starvation, whether it's through, you know, the low carb, uh, high fat diet, or, or, or other means. Um, the ketones can be used efficiently by the body without spilling into the urine. I want you spilling into the urine. Usually, in order to do that, you have to have a high fat, very high fat, but low protein diet. Because what happens is, when you have higher levels of protein, as in, as, as in the diet that I've, I've espoused, and, and of course mine is a phase shift diet, and we can discuss that later, but um, when you have high levels of protein, you get increased gluconeogenesis, so you get glucose production and ketone production as well, and it's all utilized much more efficiently because they complement each other. So you don't get much spillage into the urine. So somebody who's on a high-protein diet will rarely get uh, ketonuria, uh, ketones in the urine. So they think they're doing something wrong. They're saying, my God, I'm supposed to have ketones here. I mean, I'm not eating any carbs at all. I'm on a high-fat and high protein diet, why am I not spilling over? And that's the reason. Okay, so are people under the misassumption? So, so the right now within the keto community, everybody has a uh, a ketone blood strip meter, and everybody's always checking for ketone levels. And the objective is to have higher and higher ketone levels in the blood. Isn't there a possibility that? higher and higher ketone levels in the blood may show a lack of utilization of them as an energy substrate? It can. No, don't forget, there's a level where the body can no longer extract ketones. But the brain doesn't seem to have uh, much of a level. For example, uh, the level of ketones in the blood usually can be extracted efficiently by the brain. But with muscle, um, if, if someone is in, in, in starvation mode, then the ketones can be up to 50% us, usable from the blood. Um, if they're not, they may only be 5% or even less. So, you know, having ketones in the blood may not say anything about your utilization of ketones. It all depends on so many other factors. Okay. So, if, if someone wants to get into ketosis, isn't it? As uncomplicated as fasting for 16 hours to 24 hours and then having and then starting out by eating very, very little carbohydrates in your meals and, that, and, and favoring a more one to one protein to fat uh, ratio. Isn't it that simple? Do we do we really need books about getting into ketosis? Do we need entire radio shows that talk week in and week out about getting into ketosis. Is it really that complicated? I thought it was an evolutionary gift that just tripped on its own when you didn't eat for a while. Well, actually, I, I used to have an industrial taste for about 10, 12 days. Basically, the person goes on a low-carb, higher-fat diet, moderate protein, and by the time they're into the 12th day, they're 
pretty well in in in, in the mode where they're using uh, dietary fat, uh, and of course the production of ketones from that uh, as their main uh, fuel, and and they've gone away from using glycolysis and carbohydrates as as the main fuel source. So um, some studies have shown that in as little as four days you can actually be in ketosis, uh, significant ketosis. So, but I, I usually take a longer level, get the person adapted to it, and I feel that the, that, that probably with my facious diet, um, it, it takes probably about a month before the person is really getting all the benefits. Okay. Um, now, since you said the face shift, I'm trying to type to the audience. I'm trying to interview. I really need a producer. But anyway, um, if... I see a lot of people who go on the ketogenic diet with the desire to lose body fat. That's their exclusive reason for, oh, I'm 300 pounds and I want to lose fat as efficiently as possible. And God bless them. I know what it feels like to be 330. I know what it feels like to be in a hurry uh, to lose weight, um, even though that weight accumulated over the course of maybe two decades. But a lot of people gravitate strictly to the ketogenic diet because they believe that it's the most efficient way to lose body fat. And then I see this, this scenario often. They're on it for eight months. The first six months, they lose a significant amount of weight. And then the next two months, they just kind of stall. But they stick with it anyway. In fact, their keto friends tell them, double down, eat more fat, to eat more calories, you know. Uh, and, 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 and so, and then, then you see these posts on Facebook different walls you know my hair's falling out i can't sleep uh and i stopped losing weight three months ago what should i do isn't the logical answer it's time to shift out of keto and do something else for a while yeah i mean <laughs> called the monophasic uh, ketogenic diet basically the person stays on that diet and doesn't change uh the macronutrients uh, it just, just basically does the same thing day after day for a month at a time. Um, it, it actually is counterproductive in the long term, with the end result being, sure, they lose weight, but the gain, the, the, the weight can often be lean body mass. Mm. They, actually can, they, they can actually have more body fat. Yes, because they're, lo they're, lowering, they're lowering their resting. So I've said for 12 years, muscle is metabolic currency. Get in the gym and make a deposit today. I really believe that. That's just not a fancy catchphrase. The more muscle you have on your carcass, the higher your resting energy rate is, the higher your ability to manage glucose is. Muscle is what burns calories. It's the machinery. You, When you do any kind of dieting, I don't care if it's the HCG diet, uh, uh, actually, according to Keckwick and Pawan, the only diet, isocaloric, single macronutri macronutrient-derived uh, uh, diet, 80% of your calories have to come from that one macronutrient, fat, protein or carbohydrate. The only diet in the Keckwick and Pawan, was that 1924 model? Or was it, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I forget when this, okay. They, they showed the only, the only group that put on muscle and lost body fat. So their, their net loss was less than the people who just ate fat because they, they, they traded some muscle for fat. But the only group that added muscle was the high protein diet people. I don't know if I ever mentioned this in, uh, in any of the shows, but uh, I've coined the term an abalone, which basically means all the processes in the body that contribute to an anabolic response, in other words, uh, improved body composition, performance, etc. And the, the problem with a monophasic uh, ketogenic diet, meaning you're on the same basically macronutrient uh, composition for long periods of time, um, it, it results in decreases in testosterone, <laughs> uh, IGF-1, um, this is great, but Mar Mar do you know why this is great? Because you're actually creating the segue that was what I wanted to talk about when we come out of this break. Okay. Uh, what I want to talk about when we come out of this break, you know, we forget, we always complain that doctors forget about evolution when treating patients. Well, you know what? Most of us forget about evolution when we need confirmation bias. We, so let's, let's talk about why these phenomena occur that Marl just pointed out. Because... 
Well, no, no, no. You can you can take us down into the deep dive. I'm going to skim the surface and find. find I'm, I'm going to set you up for where we're going to dive. Okay. Okay. I right, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Superhuman Radio. other olive oil like Popovitz extra virgin olive. Not just because of the care and quality that goes into producing it, but also because the unique Nocellata di Alice olive that grows in Sicily is like no other olive in the world. Its spicy yet buttery flavor improves any food it comes in contact with. Higher in antioxidants, Popovitz is raw, unfiltered, and cloudy and comes from a single orchard owned and operated by the same family for over 100 years. It's the only olive oil Elisa and I will ever use. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Pop Events banner ad and use code SHR45 and get two bottles of Pop Events for $45 while supplies last. New Mass Pro Synthogen X2 just upped its own legendary game. To distance itself even further from the rest of the pack, Synthogen X2 now has double the key active ingredients. If you've ever wondered what steroid-like recovery feels like, Synthogen X2 delivers. See why others compare it favorably to powerful bodybuilding drugs. Drugs at synthogen.com. Mass Pro Synthogen. When you train with it, you'll gain with it. Mitochondrial uncoupling is the holy grail of fat loss. Making mitochondria work harder raises body temperature and metabolic rate without the jitters of stimulants. Now there is an over-the-counter mitochondrial uncoupler that will let you shred your body down to the last pounds of body fat. It's Trojan Horse. This is the supplement breakthrough of the decade. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Trojan Horse banner ad. Use coupon code SHR and save 20% off your order today. BlackstoneLabs.com. Trojan Horse. If you've followed my transformation on Facebook, you've been wondering what I've done to create such dramatic results. One of the things is I've started every day with the Kegenix Prime and then trained fasted and remained fasted till my first meal at 2 o'clock. Kegenix Prime gives me all the energy I need while shutting down hunger. And since the ketones are bound to a quad mineral blend, I'm getting all the magnesium, calcium, potassium, and sodium I need to keep my minerals in balance. Try Kegenix Prime yourself. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Kegenix banner ad today and save 25% off your first purchase. Kegenix Prime. I couldn't have done it without it. Hey, this is Carl. Start your day just like I do with a high-dose lipospheric vitamin C from Live On Labs. You, too, can benefit from Live On Labs' lipospheric delivery system. No more pills or powders. That's outdated technology. Live On Labs has the world's most efficient vitamin delivery system, period. Learn a lot more today at liveonlabs.com and benefit from their new reduced pricing. That's liveonlabs.com, L-I-V-O-N, labs.com. Do you know how to properly use carbohydrates to ignite your performance in the field and in the gym? You will now, thanks to this free book by EFX Sports. The Carb User's Guide for Maximum Performance reveals why omitting carbohydrates from your diet can totally crush your gains. Ever wonder how many grams you need for your specific sport? Not anymore. We give you the critical number you need to dominate your competition. You'll even discover the super carb that's taking the athlete world by storm. You must try it to believe it. Go to getcarbolin.com forward slash carb guide today and get your copy absolutely free. Once again, it's G-E-T-K-A-R-B-O-L-Y-N.com forward slash C-A-R-B-G-U-I-D-E. 4.6 million years of evolution gave us the blueprint for the perfect protein supplement for humans. So why do all protein supplement manufacturers ignore it? We don't. The first human-appropriate protein supplement is Thrive Advanced. Built around the blueprint of mother's milk, Thrive Advanced contains the amino acids, peptides, micronutrients, enzymes, probiotics, and vitamins that support protein absorption and assimilation. All of our dairy proteins come from happy cows on pastures here in the United States and are low-heat pasteurized. You'll never find any artificial sweeteners, additives, or ingredients. You won't even find thickeners or gums in Thrive Advanced. And we back up our label claims with post-production lab analysis that's available right on our website. Visit superhumanradio.com and click the Thrive Advanced banner ad and use code SHR and save 50% off your entire order today. This is the Superhuman Channel. Evolution just got kicked up a notch. Welcome back. I apologize in advance for some of the audio problems we've been having. 
but I've got to keep Morrow's mic ramped up really high so that uh, you can actually uh, hear him well enough. And I, and I also say the MP3 is going to be fine. The MP3 is recording perfectly. It's just what's going out over Facebook. And I'll probably just pull this video down and, and, and edit it to make sure that the audio is good on this because this is an important show. I mean, we are going down that rabbit hole again with yet another dietary template and trying to make it something it isn't. And it's backfiring on a lot of people. It's working for some people, but it's backfiring on other people. It, it's, the, it's the truth. You just have to look around at the poor people who keep doubling down on fat and getting fatter and, and having hormonal problems. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a supposition, and I'm going to turn it over tomorrow to be the, the professor that, professore, uh, that he is and, and put the student in his place or say, hey, you know, there's a little truth to that. So here's, here's my take on it. I'm not a very educated person. Okay, my take on it is this. When you're in ketosis all the time, it's a stress indicator to your body because from an evolutionary perspective, if all you had to eat was fat, you were kind of like in survival mode now. Like, you know, this is not a good time. The environment is uh, is, 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 is not uh, it's hostile. The environment is hostile. Uh, it's not conducive to a robust, healthy a life because it seems we're limited. Oh my God. You know, we, we, all we're eating is this fat all the time. And so while the body will give up body fat at some point in time, it goes, Holy S we're in trouble. Turn down resting metabolic rate, turn off reproductive machinery. Cause if we can't feed ourselves, then we can't bring a baby into the world. I guarantee you, I will go on record and say this. And I know people are going to come out, Carl, you don't have any research to prove that. I'll bet you a high number of people who are on keto all the time can't have children or have difficulty having children, okay? So my perspective from this, Mauro, is that the ketogenic diet needs to be cyclical. Otherwise, the body goes, we're in trouble, and goes into that mode, which is counter to the reason people are doing the diet in the first place. Okay, I sit back and I defer to you. longer, uh, low carb, uh, higher fat, and then uh, a higher carb, uh, moderate protein, uh, lower fat. The, the shift, even though it's, it's an uneven shift, one, one is five days, the other one can be, well, five or six days, the other one can be one to two days or even one meal. What, what happens is it keeps the machinery, the epigenetic machinery, to be able to handle both the fats to uh, ketones and also glycolysis, uh, gluconeogenesis, uh, which is the formation of glucose from uh, usually amino acid carbons, uh, protein carbons, um, and the whole glycogen pathways, both the formation and the breakdown of glycogen, it, it, has, it has an important function in the body in that it doesn't allow lowering levels of testosterone, IGF-1, um, even growth hormone, um, and not only IGF-1 systemic, but IGF-1 in the tissues like mechanical growth factor, so that you're limiting your ability to build muscle mass. You're actually increasing, staying, staying on the on, on strictly the ketogenic diet, you're actually increasing body fat over the long term and increasing visceral body fat, which is interesting because, of course, as you know, the visceral body fat is, is, is more... Um, catastrophic as far as cardiovascular well it, 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 it almost it becomes an uh, it becomes an organ in and of it, itself it starts to produce inflammatory cytokines and hormones and all sorts of stuff so you're definitely right what, staying on staying on a monophasic ketogenic diet for a long period of time tells your body that hey we better shut things down we're not going we're not going to grow as much um uh, children for example who are on on the ketogenic diet for epileptic purposes etc tend to be shorter in height tend tend not to grow as, as high or have as much muscle mass, et cetera. So there are definite, uh, and, and also the IGF-1 and growth hormone levels decrease, testosterone levels decrease. So my whole face shift diet is to stop all that and make it an anabolic diet. Um, it, it, it's something that, that you, want to, you, want, you want to shift the anabolone to an anabolic one so you're improving body composition and performance uh, by, get, by allowing rises in insulin and growth hormone, IGF-1, and testosterone at various times every week so that you're not epigenetically 
you know, stuck in, in, in kind of a negative phase, which is what a chronic ketogenic diet is. Um, now, first of all, you have to look at hardwired DNA as a resource. It's not, it's not inevitable. So your body will change the DNA expression according to what's going on in the environment, according to what's going on with you, your age, uh, you know, what, what you're eating, the activity levels, um, you know, any propensity you may have for, for various other things. So that in order to keep the epigenome sort of being able to fluctuate between both the ketogenic diet and the higher carb diet so that you're able to, for example, increase performance because you have now an ability to use um, uh, glycolysis, uh, gluconeogenesis, to uh, at times when fats and ketones just aren't enough, you, uh, high intensity exercises. And, the, and this goes for even endurance performance because any endurance performance usually requires phases of high intensity, you know, whether it's cycling or whether it's uh, running or, you know, you need these phases. And if you stay on a strictly ketogenic diet, you're not able to utilize the glycolytic fast ATP response that you would be were, if, if you stayed on a, on a phasic diet like mine. Okay. Um, th so since you injected IGF-1, Stephen Lay messaged me on Facebook. I don't have it in front of me, Stephen, so I'm really going from memory. Imagine that. I still have a memory. But, um, you know, he asked about, well, well isn't, the, uh, isn't the ketogenic diet more anti-aging because of the reduction in IGF-1? And I even think he said methionine. Uh, I may be wrong. But, I, I mean, I'm of the opinion that IGF-1 is not a bad thing. It's when it's, it's put in bad situations. What, what, what do you think about that? Well, that's exactly the point. The whole point, my anabolone, my anabolic span, and I think I mentioned this before, you know, lifespan and health span just aren't enough. Health span means you're free of disease, but you could be fragile, you could be falling down all over the place, et cetera. Um, the anabolic span makes you vigorous and strong very close to when you die, basically, okay? Um, so... Um, it, it's important to have IGF-1 levels uh, elevated, especially in, in, in tissues like skeletal muscle, et cetera, where you have the uh, isoforms of IGF-1 forming. Systemic IGF-1 levels may even be low, whereas the tissue IGF-1 levels, the isoforms, like mechanical growth factor and others, uh, can be high. So you're maintaining the anabolone, but you're not causing disease. The whole thing with IGF-1 is that it increases uh, in certain cancers, it can increase the the, the uh, progression of the cancer. Yes, this, but but that, but that but that's because but that's because IGF one is good for cells. It's not it's not it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't go. Oh, you're a cancer cell. I'm not going to be good to you. It's good for cellular repair, cellular turnover. Uh, what happens with the cancer cell is that it loses its ability to be influenced by apoptotic landscape, and so the IGF one basically just keeps feeding it, but it never dies when it's supposed to. It's not the IGF one's fault. That the cancer cell doesn't die. Antiapoptotic, you know. Yeah. So, so, so. Cellular size increases. You know, it, it, it's a very, very anabolic hormone, especially when coupled with testosterone. The two of them together have been used by athletes uh, exogenously for like 40, 50 years now. You know, it's really funny. Um, you and I, you came to the conclusion a long time before me, but I ended up coming to this conclusion myself as well, and that is the fact that. Being anabolic is probably one of the most important things to health uh, in general and in, to longevity because we're finding out that when people uh, lose muscle mass, they, they, they lose their ability to be ambulatory, they fall, they end up in institutions, their lives end a lot faster than they need to. And so, yeah, oh, yeah, depression, type 2 diabetes. I mean, and so I have been a believer that no matter what disease state you have, no matter you know, what pathology you suffer from. Training, because it turns on anabolic machinery, training, you'll always do better if you exercise. And over the years, I have found, and I don't mean jog, I mean resistance training. And, and so I've read, read studies over the years that, that show a clear path to that. And more recently, one on breast cancer survivorship. Uh, you know, the women who exercised rigorously, the, the harder they exercised, the longer they lived, the better they did against their breast cancer. And so, you know, we are missing the boat. Everybody wants to take metformin 
and slow down the machinery. So we become, you know, these like weak little, oh, we sit in a chair and push me over there and want a television. But hey, I'm 114 years old, but I can't get up and go to the bathroom myself. You, look, you can live to 114 years old and be strong and robust. Yeah, that's the point. Here's the thing, though. You know, there's a, there's a lot of studies that are contradictory, as you know. You know, they, they contradict each other. One of Metformin originally came out that said it increased longevity, increased lifespan, all that kind of junk. Another one came out just shortly after saying that it actually decreases longevity, increases Alzheimer's, dementia, et cetera. Then another one came out and says, no, it didn't do that. Another one came out and says, yes, it did do that. They can't make up their minds because scientific studies are like putting blinders on. You're looking at very specific, specific um, uh, scenarios. And which may, usually not, uh, uh, have anything to do with real life. You know, it's such a great point. And the analogy I use when I discuss this with people, it's like if I give you an address to go to and you drive to that address and I ask you what did the house look like, you'll tell me. If I say to you, what was the house like three blocks before you got there? You, you know, I wasn't paying attention to that. That is what research is like. Researchers like to set up endpoints and then they like to do things and try to discover if those endpoints are met. Sometimes those endpoints aren't met, but the valuable information is just discarded because it wasn't what they were looking for. Or, well, it you can study the very short term and involve a small number of people. Now, you know that there's great variability in the, in the people, both in the hardwired DNA, which I, I consider a resource, and the DNA that actually represents their phenotype, which is the epigenome, the, the epigenetic aspects of it all. Uh, that changes the metabolome, it changes what I call the anabolome. Uh, there are so many things that you can do to optimize that, but right now it's so confusing. Even even the business about uh, this new fat, the, the ketogenic diet that, that everybody's uh, going on, you know, they, want to, they want to maximize the amount of ketones in their blood, etc. Stay on this diet for as long as they need to, even if they see negative results. <laughs> they believe, because of the research, and some of the research, of course, has to do with people who are trying, what well, has to do with greed, okay? Because they either have patents or else they're getting feedback or else they're getting, you know, under the table money, et cetera, by running these studies certain ways. And you, and you can pretty well predict which ones are which. Um, so you, you got to really be careful with any of the fans. I think yeah. it, it may not be a, a bad idea to try it, but according to your own specific epigenetic makeup, it probably, over the long term, is going to be counterproductive. And, and listen, if, if, you know, to, to channel a guy who I happen to have a lot of respect for, one of the few people on TV, and that's Dr. Phil, um, he always likes to say to people when they, when he sees somebody doing something that's obviously not in their best interest, but they just keep on doing it. He says, he asks a very simple question and its answer is blatantly in your face and you can't dodge it. He goes, well, how's that working for you? So, you know, somebody says, well, I've been on keto for six, six months now. I stopped losing weight three months ago. I got hemorrhoids. My hair's falling out. I can't sleep. My skin is dry. My, uh, uh, my sinuses are plugged up. In a, what should I do? What should I do? And people go, oh, eat more fat. Get bacon. Eat more bacon. You, you're not eating enough calories. Just eat more fat. And it's like, no. How's it working for you? If it's not working for you, do something different. Don't do the same thing times two. study was done on, uh, on rats and, and actually mice as well, uh, where they did uh, varying amounts of fat and protein in the diet. They found that the ones that had the highest fat, the lowest protein, who obviously were in real, really, really high ketosis, uh, you know, with the ketonemia was very high, uh, had the least amount of lean body mass and the most amount of body fat over the long term. Right. Now, of course, you know, we're not mice, we're not rats, of course, and, and, and there are obvious differences. But the same thing I've seen in humans. I've, I've been working on the, the uh, uh, sort of the face shift diet in order to make it the best of both worlds. In other words, so if somebody needs the glycolytic response, they've got it. If they need the ketogenic response, they've got it. Uh, and, and, and it doesn't decrease the, the, an, the anabolone, doesn't decrease the, uh, the, the ability to build muscle mass, to, you know, improve body composition and performance, et cetera, as against sticking to strictly one monophasic diet, regardless of that diet. Right. The body says something's wrong with the environment. We have to go into protection mode when that's how you, when that's how you do it. We have to take a break. When we come back, we're going to start talking a little bit about the anabolic diet in the context of 
I've been observing different keto groups for some time now. And I can tell you the ones where the diet works. And I can tell you the ones where the diet doesn't work from a body recomposition standpoint. And I'm going to spit some truth here. And then we're going to turn it over to Dr. Di Pasquale to correct me. Stay tuned, Brad. <laughs> Quest Keto is making the ketogenic lifestyle more delicious and more convenient than ever. The high-fat, moderate-protein, low-carb keto diet has earned a reputation for being complicated. Quest Keto has changed all of that by offering sweet and savory snacks and an entire line of ready-to-go ketogenic meals. They've taken the guesswork out of it for you. From keto cinnamon rolls, pizza, crackers, and more, you can enjoy it all and experience the benefits of this nutritious approach anytime, anywhere. Thanks to Quest Keto. Go to questketo.com to order your meals today. U.S. Wellness Meats is the leader in home-delivered, high-quality animal protein. Grass-fed beef, lamb, bison, and dairy. Plus, wild-caught seafood, heritage pork, and free-range poultry. Everything delivered right to your door within days of your order. There is no one better to supply you and your family with the highest-quality pastured meat product and dairy than U.S. Wellness Meats. Save 15% off when you use the coupon code SHR. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the U.S. Wellness Meats banner ad. Discover the faster way of getting real results with bodybuildingsupplements.com. Bodybuildingsupplements.com has powerful, proven solutions like patent technology, Crealkaline Supreme, Mass Pro Synthogen, and Adaptogen N. RVD here. I love Adaptogen N. Give it a try. You'll see. My Adaptogen N at bodybuildingsupplements.com. See remarkable results in 21 days or your money back. Bodybuildingsupplements.com. Since 1993, the trusted source for real results. Use promo code SUPERHUMAN and get an extra 15% off your Adaptogen N today at bodybuildingsupplements.com. In today's world, what would you give to have that ultimate edge, to always function at the highest possible level? That's exactly what the Da Vinci from Ultra Human gives you. Just one tablet a day increases focus, lowers anxiety, enhances social fluency, and improves your mood and drive. It's eight hours strong with no crash. A sharp mind is priceless. And the Da Vinci even comes with a money-back guarantee. Find out more at theultrahuman.net. Make your brain 25 again with the Da Vinci from theultrahuman.net. Use discount code SHR10 for 10% off and free shipping. Hey, this is Carl. Start your day just like I do with a high-dose lipospheric vitamin C from Live On Labs. You too can benefit from Live On Labs lipospheric delivery system. No more pills or powders. That's outdated technology. Live On Labs has the world's most efficient vitamin delivery system, period. Learn a lot more today at liveonlabs.com and benefit from their new reduced pricing. That's liveonlabs.com, L-I-V-O-N, labs.com. Few products can boast being considered the food of the gods by the Aztecs, but the ingredients in Bio Superfood have been. Some algae are the most efficient forms of nutrients, proteins, minerals, enzymes, fatty acids, antioxidants, and much more. Bio Superfood is something you have to experience for yourself. That's why, for a limited time, buy any Bio Superfood products and save 15% off your first order. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the banner ad to read the research and learn why Bio Superfood is the best supplement in the world you're not already taking. Do you know how to properly use carbohydrate to ignite your performance in the field and in the gym? You will now, thanks to this free book by EFX Sports. The Carb User's Guide for Maximum Performance reveals why omitting carbohydrates from your diet can totally crush your gains. Ever wonder how many grams you need for your specific sport? Not anymore. We give you the critical number you need to dominate your competition. You'll even discover the super carb that's taking the athletic world by storm. You must try it to believe it. Go to getcarbolin.com forward slash carb guide today and get your copy absolutely free. Once again, it's G-E-T-K-A-R-B-O-L-Y-N.com forward slash C-A-R-B-G-U-I-D-E. You're listening to the Superhuman Channel. Don't hate us because we feel good. Yo, my check, my check. Yo, my check, my check. Yeah, here you go. But nah, that hot new thing. Yeah, I heard you got that hot new thing. Yeah, that hot new thing, the ketogenic diet. I heard you had that. All right, so we're talking with uh, Dr. Mauro Di Pasquale and somebody I'm so fortunate to know and have been influenced by and also um, has helped this show immensely over the years 
Marl was my very first guest I ever had on the show at the end of 2005. So let's, uh, I want to point something out and you tell me if this is just a coincidence or there is a phenomenon here. I notice that the people who do the best with the uh, ketogenic diet are the ones that train as strength athletes, uh, like my friend Marek Nikolic, uh, you know, heavy lifting, working, training hard, lots of resistance training. They continue to lose body fat where the, the, the guys and gals who they just depend on the ketogenic diet to shed the body fat. They hit a point where, as you pointed out before, their REE must get to the point where the body goes, you know, I, I need fat because they, they don't have enough muscle on their body. And so the ketogenic diet favors the strength and conditioning athlete. Is, is that accurate or is that just, I, I'm, I'm drawn for straws here. It is somewhat accurate. My initial, my initial book, my initial book was in about 30 years, 30 some odd years ago. Um, actually 25 or so. But uh, before that I'd written on it for 10, 15 years. But I did two books after that. One was the anabolic solution for bodybuilders. And one was the anabolic solution for powerlifters because it had, it had aspects of both. My third book is going to be the anabolic solution for endurance athletes because it also has aspects of that. But, you know, something I wanted to point out is everything revolves around the acetyl-CoA. I don't know if people are familiar with that, but the mitochondria, the energy uh, part of the cell produces the ATP, um, it's like it's like the, the, the wheel of fortune. <laughs> it's, it's the basic wheel that contributes to the energy production in, in, in various ways. Glycolysis goes down into a certain point where it's it, it turned into the mitochondria to acetate and acetyl CoA. These are two carbon units combined with a CoA unit. When, when fats are brought in from the outside by the l carnitine mechanism, uh, the fats are broken down into two carbon units. The uh, ketones are taken into the cell, produced by the, produced by the liver, whether it's acetyl acetate or, or uh, hydroxybutyrate or whatever it is, taken down into the cell. It's, it's taken by transporters into the mitochondria. The mitochondria breaks it down into acetate and acetyl-CoA. Okay, so the acetyl-CoA feeds this cycle so it can produce the, um, the ATP. But you also need what they call four carbon units, which can't come from fat or um, can't come from the acetate formed from glycolysis from glucose down into the uh, into the pyruvate and then into the mitochondria. So what you have is you have a two, two set system. The only thing that can feed and actually fuel that cycle and make it go faster so it produces more energy and the more energy you can train harder, helps body composition, helps lose body fat, etc. cetera, um, is, is uh, amino acids, glutamine being one of the major ones, but also some of the other amino acids are also contributory. Um, Leucine, for example, is, is, is not contributory because it's basically um, a ketogenic amino acid. It, it forms the ketogenic. But the ketogenic, again, goes into the acetate, which fuels the flux of the Krebs cycle or, or TCA cycle, or whatever you want to call it. This is, this is like the cornerstone of our metabolism. Now, whether you feed it with ketones or whether you feed it with... Uh, um, Triglycerides fats that come into the body, or whether you feed it from glucose, um, you still need the carbon body that will form into the flux, that, and and from which nucleic acids, uh, DNA, RNA, proteins, and everything are formed from. Okay, so you have you have this magnificent sort of uh, wheel of fortune, so to speak, right. that needs to be fueled in a proper way. If you overdo the acetate and the acetyl CoA it can actually be toxic to the to, to the mitochondria, so they don't function as efficiently. So you have to have the L carnitine, which shuttles the the, the carbon units in through uh, either short chain fatty acids or long chain fatty acids or even ketones, or um, it becomes and it also shuttles it out of the cell if there's too much. So it's a, it's a very complex mechanism involved, and and to stay on one kind of diet where you're really fixed and maybe causing some toxicity 
is, is, is probably the worst thing you can do. Okay, okay. So I, I want to ask you a question, right? You and I talked about the influences of acetyl L-carnitine and even growth hormone on its ability to shift mitochondrial preference to triglycerides, free fatty acids. Right. So my question to you is, in or, when the word fat adapted is used all the time within the ketogenic community. I'm sorry if my audio is a little low to people out there, but it's, it's, it's actually really good on the MP3. I started that old fat adapted thing. Well, okay, so if you're fat adapted, are ketones the only way to tell that you're fat adapted? Wouldn't, wouldn't you, your body also use free fatty acids? Do you have to produce ketones in order for your body to, to burn fat? You definitely do not. Ketones are just one of the products. The other product, of course, is long chain fatty acids taken from hopefully body deposits, initially dietary, and as you cut back on the dietary fats, which is what I propose people to do, um, then the body is used to using body fats. In other words, epigenetically, you now have a mechanism where, where, where fats are your primary fuel. It will use body fat. Long-chain fatty acids coming off that and, and glycerol, as, as the triglycerides get broken up, they're brought into the, uh, in, into the mitochondria through the carnitine shuttle, and then broken down into two carbon units in the mitochondria, which then couples with the acetyl-CoA and fluxes the, uh, the Krebs cycle, uh, TCA cycle, uh, to produce ATP, to, to, to make it a very efficient production of ATP. But you also have to have other components to keep that cycle going. If you have too much of the acetate, too much of the of the two carbon units, then you can deplete the CoA, and you can actually, as I mentioned, you can cause uh, dysfunction in the mitochondria and actually make it less efficient. So this is why I, I always, and the, whole, the whole reason why I say it's a high-fat, high-protein diet is that because you need the protein, to complete the fluxing mm. of ATP, otherwise uh, it just stalls and can become toxic. Okay, okay. And it's complicated. It's much more complicated. So, what, so, and what, what, what con conditions would have to precipitate in order for the body to choose to not only use but produce ketones, as opposed to just using the free fatty acid that it, can, it, it clearly can also use as a, an energy substrate? Is there some mechanism, some some primal mechanism that says, oh, like, like is, it, it, are ketones indicative of, oh, now we're really in, in, in deep water here? Or is it just uh, the body just switches as it would nil, willy-nilly? Okay, well, we've got two things here. First of all, the ketones are produced in the liver. The liver senses that there's not enough uh, glucose. You need an alternate energy source. It starts producing the ketones. The ketones get chunked out of the liver and is used mainly by the brain and the skeletal muscle, but also other tissues as well. Um, so the ketones become a fuel, but also breakdown of body fat or the utilization of dietary body fat also, in the end, produces the same acetyl-CoA, same acetate, and, and, and the cycle runs exactly the same. How does it choose which one? It depends on, 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 on the condition, what the person is doing, mm -hmm. um, you know, their epigenetics, uh, 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 whether they're exercising or not exercising, uh, ketones are, are a faster way of getting the energy. Mm. They're automatically brought into the, uh, they're, they're transported uh, into the mitochondria and broken up rather quickly, whereas breaking down the long chain fatty acids as, as acyl carnitine that go into the mitochondria takes beta oxidation. You've got to cut those things up in, into two carbon units. It's like a chopping block, okay? Right. You've got, you, you got this long salami and you've got to cut it in a whole bunch of small ones. Um, right. So the ketones are a faster way. There's no doubt about that. So they're, 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 so they're also they're also they're also they're also metabolically less expensive to burn. So I could see why they would be preferentially used. Well, it, it all depends. It depends on the system and, 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 and just how your fat is adapted. Each person is going to be slightly different, obviously. Um, overall, I would say that ketones are probably used preferentially at first. Um, and if, 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 they over, if they overwhelm the mitochondria, in other words, too many ketones are brought in by the monocarboxylate uh, uh, transporters, then you have this phase where you actually have to get the ketones out of the mitochondria in order to, for the mitochondria to become efficient. Really? It the flux. Oh. It's very, it, like I say, you know, 
this. We're just learning about this stuff. I hate to say this, but all this. Stuff I know because you've been you've been doing this for forty years. You you've been doing this for forty years, and you're saying we're just learning about this stuff. I want to point that out to the listeners because there are people out there that have been doing keto for twelve years, and they they call themselves experts at it. And here you got a guy that forty years ago was using it with athletes. And, and was ridiculed. What do you, what, you got? It, these guys eating all that fat. They need more carbs. No, no, no. He said, "Watch what happens," and they perform better. And you got him saying, "We're still learning about this." I, I, I wanna. If you were here, I would, I would, I would bow and I would, I would kiss your shoe. I would. I swear to God. This is not just ivory tower stuff. Okay, I've been doing the research for almost five decades, over five decades. But I've also been in the trenches. I was a world. Uh, champion in powerlifting. Yeah. I did I, I, I did very well uh, in intercollegiate uh, wrestling and gymnastics. I mean, I've been doing the exercise since I was 13, okay? Yeah. Now, that's almost six decades of involvement in the trenches and in research. So when I say that we don't have all the answers, I really mean we don't have all the answers. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and one other thing I want to make a point of before we go into the break. Uh, this is a wildly popular show already. The feedback we're getting on Facebook and everybody wants to know when will the MP3 be up and, and everything will be up later today. I promise you, because we're still working on the website transition, but I, I want to also make you another promise. I promise that I will not start doing a weekly keto show because everything we're going to talk about in this show today is everything that you need to know. And that's that we're going to take a quick commercial break. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Mauro Di Pasquale spitting the truth about the ketogenic diet. Stay tuned. There are a few products that I believe in the way I believe in can see eye drops. I've been using can see for six months now, and the changes in my vision are nothing short of amazing. Wow, that's an old commercial. The truth is I've been using can see eye drops for 11 years now, and I credit can see eye drops as being the reason that I do not need reading glasses at 58 years old. Can see eye drops improve the quality and health of your eyes indefinitely. That's why I both use and endorse can see eye drops go to wisechoicemedicine.com and learn about how can see eye drops can improve the health of your eyes and the quality of your vision today new mass pro synthogen x2 just upped its own legendary game to distance itself even further from the rest of the pack synthogen x2 now has double the key active ingredients if you've ever wondered what steroid like recovery feels like synthogen x2 delivers see why others compare it favorably to powerful bodybuilding drugs at Synthogen.com. Mass Pro Synthogen. When you train with it, you'll gain with it. Quest Keto is making the ketogenic lifestyle more delicious and more convenient than ever. The high-fat, moderate-protein, low-carb keto diet has earned a reputation for being complicated. Quest Keto has changed all of that by offering sweet and savory snacks and an entire line of ready-to-go ketogenic meals. They've taken the guesswork out of it for you. From keto cinnamon rolls, pizza, crackers, and more, you can enjoy it all and experience the benefits of this nutritious approach anytime, anywhere. Thanks to Quest Keto. Go to questketo.com to order your meals today. The benefits of a ketogenic diet are immeasurable. Health, resist disease, mental function, and even performance. But getting into ketosis can take weeks, if even at all. Now you can get into ketosis in 10 minutes. Keto Kena is the first ketone powder that has been clinically shown to switch you into a ketogenic state by providing a rush of ketones into the bloodstream. Like to train fasted or want to spare more muscle glycogen during workouts? Take a shot of Keto Kena and hit it hard. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Keto Kena banner ad today. Discover the faster way of getting real results with bodybuildingsupplements.com. Bodybuildingsupplements.com has powerful, proven solutions like patent technology, Crealkaline Supreme, Mass Pro Synthogen, and Adaptogen N. R-E-D here. I love Adaptogen N. Give it a try. You'll see. My adaptogen in at bodybuildingsupplements.com. See remarkable results in 21 days or your money back. Bodybuildingsupplements.com. Since 1993, the trusted source for real results. Use promo code SUPERHUMAN and get an extra 15% off your adaptogen in today at bodybuildingsupplements.com. Mitochondrial uncoupling is the holy grail of fat loss. Making mitochondria work harder raises body temperature and metabolic rate without the jitters of stimulants. 
now there is an over-the-counter mitochondrial uncoupler that will let you shred your body down to the last pounds of body fat. It's Trojan Horse. This is the supplement breakthrough of the decade. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Trojan Horse banner ad. Use coupon code SHR and save 20% off your order today. BlackstoneLabs.com. Trojan Horse. Alaskans agree that sockeye offers the truest salmon taste. Over decades of fishing Alaskan waters, Vital Choice has rare access to the very finest of these fish. Vital Choice sockeye comes from smaller harvest regions with fewer boats and faster processing. So our sockeye is flash frozen within hours of harvest to capture its fresh caught quality. Rich in flavor, omega-3s, and vitamin D, our most popular salmon also abounds in astaxanthin, the potent antioxidant that provides its vibrant red hue. Save 15% off. Go to Superhuman Radio and click the Vital Choice banner ad today. This is the Superhuman Channel where brawn and brains finally meet. Welcome back. So I want to clarify one thing, and then I want to move on. I want to talk a little bit about um, the new ketone supplements out there. But before I do any of that, I want to plug uh, Marl's website, uh, which is where you can go and get some of the most advanced formulated supplements in the world. And it's the truth. Uh, the reason for that is that it's it's a boutique brand that attracts pretty much only professional athletes, Olymp, uh, Olympic athletes, because Morrow constantly updates every single supplement, has a category, a design end result. And as emerging science comes out, Morrow changes the formula for you. You, you don't have to worry about, oh, the new thing is now, w- w- uh, is that in my supplement? If it's if Morrow f- formulated it, yeah. And that's because look at the Look at the attitude. This is a true scientist. There's so many people on the internet today who call themselves scientists, but then they dig their heels in without being open-minded because the, the purpose of science is to find the truth, not to own the truth. Finding the truth requires cordial, open-minded discourse between scientists as opposed to people who protect their little patch of science. Oh, this is my patch of science. Stay with me. I'm right. And, and look at this man. He's been doing it since before anybody. We're still learning about it. Don't you think he brings that type of humility uh, and intellect to the development of supplements? Mara, what's the website? Oh, it came online. Great. Yeah, the, the um, store part, the shop part, has updates on all of the supplements I've got. I'm updating uh, some of them are 20 pages long and uh, with, with several hundred uh, uh, really evidence-based um, information as well. Um, but it's, uh, we've gone back to the old www.metabolicdiet.com. Excellent. Excellent. That's the, that's the one that you've had the longest, metabolicdiet.com. Yeah, and back on, and the, the, the store part is good and, and really full of right up to date information. In other words, all the what I do with my supplements is I call them versions, just just like mm. a software. Uh, we're on version five, six, depending on uh, on how many versions I've gone through over the last uh, decade or more. And um, so they'll find right up to date information. This, this includes studies done just this month. So I, I keep working on them. They're all right, right. But, but then they're replaced. Now, um, you know, people can go and have a look at the new site. Um, the old site is www.moromd.com. Uh, M-A-U-R-O-M-D.com. Yeah, okay. It has uh, more information on articles and stuff, but it's a very frustrating site, and I haven't been able to do much with it. This new site will have an unbelievable amount of information once the, uh, the, other, the other side of the site is done. Um, I also wanted to, to and, and I've never really, really brought this out, but about 10 years ago, um, I did a muscle biopsy myself needle muscle biopsy. Right. And um, the interesting thing that I found was that I had a lot of intramuscular triglycerides in the muscle. And the the uh, intramuscular triglycerides were almost always right next to the mitochondria. In other words, the the, the, the plasma membranes of the two were touching. Do you think do you do, do you think do you, do you think that wait 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 hold on I cut you off for but please hold on. Do you think that's because of years of eating and training the way you have, or was that acute because you've been eating that way recently? No, I've been eating that way for 
for a long, long time. Okay. It's just my way. That's, that's my lifestyle. Okay. But, um, uh, other studies have been done where they've shown, for example, that uh, uh, athletes that uh, are on a higher fat diet et cetera, will have an increase in intramuscular triglycerides. Now, at one time, an increase in those triglycerides, in other words, fat, drop, fat droplets in the muscle itself, the muscle fiber, uh, was considered a, a sign of diabetes. <laughs> then, you know, they turned it around and said, well, actually, uh, people who have that have have greater insulin sensitivity than the normal person. Right. So it was a conundrum, uh, which is still, still exists. But anyway, the interesting thing was that I had glycogen granules and the uh, intramuscular triglycerides next to the mitochondria. So I was able to use whatever was needed at right. the time. I was fat adapted so that most of my uh, energy that didn't require, you know, a higher VO2 max or higher intensity would come from fat, fat, you know, the fat globules themselves. Right. And when you ask about what, what's more efficient, well, you know, the ketones obviously are also uh, are very efficient. But if you have the fat, the fat globules right next to the mitochondrial membrane, then the transport to the carnitine transport system is going to be very quick. Right. And the beta oxidation is going to be very quick. So this is the kind of thing you want to do. You want to be able to use whatever is needed at the time. Uh, yeah, so so, so what, 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 you, what you are describing effectively on a cellular level is what we talk about when we talk about the phenomenon of metabolic flexibility, being able to run on blood sugar and when blood sugar gets low run on fat and when you know and and, and then the, and then when you're running on fat for a while insulin sensitivity adjusts and all of a sudden the blood sugar you've got is enough to run on this is this phenomenon we sum up by calling metabolic flexibility you actually saw it in your in your muscle cells yeah yeah and this is what i've been working on for all these years you're a hybrid you're a hybrid human at that point in time well you know it's the shorter higher carb phase of my patient diet Kind of eliminates the adverse effects of a quick monophase or ketogenic diet. Okay, and, and, and I worked on this for years by changing various time frames, etc. Uh, so this allows the epigenetic mechanisms to keep intact the pathways uh, that make an efficient buildup of glycogen and glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis. Well, at the same time, increasing intramuscular triglycerides, as I saw when I did the biopsy, and keeping all the pathways open to use the fat ketones as a primary fuel. So in other words, you do have that metabolic flexibility so that for sports performance, exercise performance, everyday performance, when you've got to run for a bus, for example, okay, <laughs> you're going to be able to use that glycolytic pathway. Other times, you know, when you're, when, when you're not as active, then you're going to be using the fat, ketogenic, the, the ketones, et cetera, pathways. Um, this is the ideal, this, this is actually the message right. that I've trying to put out for so many years. But the thing is that I'm not a high key kind of guy, you know. I don't push things. Right. You know, I don't. I don't advertise. You know, I just go on my own merry way. Right. Uh, kind of like a loner. Um, but we are going to do in this new site. We're set up for social media and everything. Once it gets going, it, you know, my my presence will be out there a lot more. And on the show, of course, always because you you and I've been doing this for twelve years now. So so since you are the person who coined the term fat adapted, okay. Let's let's talk about that because that is a word that is thrown around amongst the keto community constantly, constantly. It's like, oh, you know, I'm fat adapted. Are you fat adapted? Once you get fat adapted, so number first question: rising ketones, ever rising ketones. You know, one, two, three millimoles, four mil. Is this an indication of fat adaption? Well, it's one of the indications. To me, fat adaption means. Your primary form, or your primary, or your primary energy source, comes from fat. Whether it's from ketones, or whether it's from body fat, whether it's from the acetyl units that uh, accumulate from uh, 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 glycolysis, uh, it's basically utilizing those acetate units as your primary form of, of energy. And the energy, most of those acetyl, uh, the, the, the acetyl units, acetyl CoA units, will come from either ketones or from body fat broken down into the uh, acetyl, acetyl and then acetyl CoA unit. Everything revolves around that two carbon unit, okay? Ketones are four carbon units. They're broken down quickly into the two carbon units coupled with acetyl CoA so that they can go around the Krebs cycle. The problem, the problem is if you have too much of it, it goes, it goes to citrate in the Krebs cycle. Citrate goes out to the uh, cytoplasm and uh, 
there, it breaks down into acetyl-CoA and acetylplasm and acetylacetate, which goes back into the mitochondria. But let's not get complicated here. Um, the acetyl-CoA, there's, there's an enzyme called acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which turns the acetyl-CoA into malonyl-CoA. Once the mal malonyl-CoA is formed, it actually forms fats. Now, what you want to do is you want to inhibit the acetyl uh, carboxylase so that the fat and the ketones, the acetyl CoA units, go into the mitochondria rather than going up the lipogenic pathway. And this is this is this is the thing I try to try to do with the diet that I have, um, with with the biphasic, monophasic, not not monophasic, sorry, but the. Uh, Polyphasic, you, 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 but it's biphasic and polyphasic, and we've talked about that in, in shows in the past. So, really, what is the role in if if you're fat adapted, and then you do your two days with some carbs, right? Your refeed, or whatever you want to call it. Um, if you are truly metabolically flexible, as you just illustrated, you should be able to get back into. Uh, ketosis in 16 with a 16 hour fast and just start eating a high fat, high protein diet again, right? Actually, actually, you don't, you, and if that's the case, you don't actually get out of ketosis. Really? You actually keep forming ketone bodies, but you're able to utilize the carbohydrates, or the glycolytic pathways to uh, enhance the four carbon units that are needed in the Krebs cycle in order to flex to operate properly. You, you don't need just the acetyl units, the, the acetyl CoA units, you also need the four carbon units which combine to form citrate and go all the way down to the citric acid cycle and form all kinds of compounds in the body. Um, it, it, excessive, excessive ketosis can lead to body fat accumulation through the malonyl CoA formation. Ah. Okay, so this, this is the kind of thing that, that you don't want. Um, so utilization of body fat and the, uh, keeping the, the, the carnitine shovel, shuttle active is very good for the body, and this is one of the things in my diet uh, tries to do so even when you're on the higher carb phase and the higher carb phase usually can last anywhere from two days to just one meal It depends on the person and how they respond. Okay, and this is a trial and error basis I always told people that you've got to try it You've got to try various variations of it and see what works for you. You can feel it You know for example some people will go on a two-day, uh, you know, they'll be on let's say the 12-day uh, Induction phase and then they'll go on a two-day binge on carbohydrates and they find oh my god i've gained four pounds and i feel like you know i'm bloated and everything well i said well, hold on for a sec when you started getting bloating that's when you should have stopped ah interesting so you can feel the indication you know when but people but see when, it, when, it, when it's a lifestyle when you have this social investment in being in, eating a certain way like vegans you know like like ketogenic dieters even like paleo or mediterranean uh when you when when it becomes a lifestyle and it has all these other meanings, you know, to, uh, social life meanings, you ignore the signs that your body's saying you probably should change the way you eat for a little while. But you can't get back on it really quick. But here's the thing. So let's say, for example, you've been on, uh, you're, you're, you're fat adapted according to, to, to the way I, I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, and you have a party going on, right? Your birthday party. So, you know, you take down, you know, half a dozen beers and you got the uh, big birthday cake and all the other carbs and everything. And so the next day you got leftovers and eat all that too. All you have to do is get back on it. Back on it. You, you don't lose it over a two, three day period. Okay. You're still fat adapted. You're still able to use fat as your primary fuel, even though you've overdone it for two or three days. Right. This is why I, I choose the weekend for people. Because then it can be sociable. Yeah. It can be sociable. Yeah. And it works very well. But you have to. You have to be able to determine for yourself just what is enough for you. In other words, one high carb meal, for example, may be all you need to get everything going properly and, and to get the anabolic effects. In other words, improve the, the all aspects of the anabolome so that you can actually uh, make progress as far as your uh, body composition, muscle mass, and performance. And then, uh, are, I mean, listen, our lives are chaotic. We're, we're asked to go out, we're asked to, you know, parties, we're asked to, you know, uh, socialize, etc., and you can do that as long as you maintain the mindset that okay, so I overdid it for a couple of days. Let's get back on it again. Nothing's been lost. We'll lose that extra, you know, loading. Well, in, in fact, I I would offer from an evolutionary perspective that eating one diet all the time will set you up 
at some point, the diet will work, work, everything works for a while, and then it stops working. And that's when the body says, I don't want you to do this anymore. I want to do something different. So I would submit that from an evolutionary perspective, if you want the keto diet to work, you better be cycling carbs once in a while. And, 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 and everybody's different. Now we have ketone meters. We have blood sugar meters. We can see. But you can't just be keto all the time. You can't. You have to understand, too, Andrew, that I've been at this for so long that I did go on a, on a, on a long phase of strictly minimal carbs and high fat and moderate and sometimes low protein to see what effect it had on my body. This is, you know, I've been at this for five decades or more. Right, right. Um, so I've tried everything. It's like my training, for example. Okay, I tried everything from training every day heavy to training every 10 days heavy. And what works best for me? Working every 10 days heavy and five days, every five days light. Mm -hmm. I got the most strength, most muscle mass, etc. That doesn't necessarily mean it works for somebody else. Right, right. And that, and, and, and then look at the humility in this. Wait a minute. Dr. D, you mean your way isn't the silver bullet? It's not the right way to be doing this? I feel like Danny DeVito and my cousin Vinny. You mean you mean you're not the only one who knows? No, he's saying, look, what worked for me may not work for you. Exactly. I love it. Genetically speaking, even. I mean, it depends on what your grandparents may be affecting what you're able to do now. Yeah. You know, as, as far as what they ate or what they were exposed to, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's... It, it, extremely complex and i keep saying to people we're just in the infancy here we're just learning yeah kind of stuff. we're going to put it in context as more information comes in but you know it's also important to be in the trenches because you really got to try it out outside of the outside of the the, the research field right find out what works and what doesn't work and then tell people this worked for me this worked for this other person it didn't work so well for this other one so what do you got to do Right. I want to take a break. When we come back, we have a question from a listener named John Peaks, and it's a really good question. We're going to get into the anabolic diet and talk about the book for just a minute because the anabolic diet is actually uh, the, 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 was given birth by the uh, biphasic and polyphasic diet that Morrow discovered when he was training. Now, stay tuned. You're listening to Superhuman Radio. We'll be right back. Six million years of evolution gave us the blueprint for the perfect protein supplement for humans. So why do all protein supplement manufacturers ignore it? We don't. The first human-appropriate protein supplement is Thrive Advanced. Built around the blueprint of mother's milk, Thrive Advanced contains the amino acids, peptides, micronutrients, enzymes, probiotics, and vitamins that support protein absorption and assimilation. All of our dairy proteins come from happy cows on pastures here in the United States and are low heat pasteurized. You'll never find any artificial sweeteners, additives, or ingredients. You won't even find thickeners or gums in Thrive Advanced. And we back up our label claims with post-production lab analysis that's available right on our website. Visit superhumanradio.com and click the Thrive Advanced banner ad and use code SHR and save 50% off your entire order today. U.S. Wellness Meats is the leader in home-delivered, high-quality animal protein. Grass-fed beef, lamb, bison, and dairy. Plus, wild-caught seafood, heritage pork, and free-range poultry. Everything delivered right to your door within days of your order. There is no one better to supply you and your family with the highest quality pasture meat product and dairy than U.S. Wellness Meats. Save 15% off when you use the coupon code SHR. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the U.S. Wellness Meats banner ad. If you followed my transformation on Facebook, you've been wondering what I've done to create such dramatic results. One of the things is I've started every day with the Kegenix Prime and then trained fasted and remained fasted until my first meal at 2 o'clock. Kegenix Prime gives me all the energy I need while shutting down hunger. And since the ketones are bound to a quad mineral blend, I'm getting all the magnesium, calcium, potassium, and sodium I need to keep my minerals in balance. Try Kegenix Prime yourself. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Kegenix banner ad today and save 25% off your first purchase. Kegenix Prime. I couldn't have done it without. Few products can boast being considered the food of the gods by the Aztecs, but the ingredients in Bio Superfood have been. Some algae are the most efficient forms of nutrients, proteins, minerals, enzymes, fatty acids, antioxidants, and much more. Bio Superfood is something you have to experience for yourself. That's why, for a limited time, buy any Bio Superfood products and save 15% off your first order. 
Go to superhumanradio.com and click the banner ad to read the research and learn why Bio Superfood is the best supplement in the world you're not already taking. There are a few products that I believe in the way I believe in Can C eye drops. I've been using Can C for six months now, and the changes in my vision are nothing short of amazing. Wow, that's an old commercial. The truth is, I've been using Can C eye drops for 11 years now, and I credit Can C eye drops as being the reason that I do not need reading glasses at 58 years old. Can see eye drops improve the quality and health of your eyes indefinitely. That's why I both use and endorse Can See Eye Drops. Go to wisechoicemedicine.com and learn about how Can See Eye Drops can improve the health of your eyes and the quality of your vision today. Hey, this is Carl. Start your day just like I do with a high dose lipospheric vitamin C from Live On Labs. You too can benefit from Live On Labs lipospheric delivery system. No more pills or powders. That's outdated technology. Live On Labs has the world's most efficient vitamin delivery system, period. Learn a lot more today at liveonlabs.com and benefit from their new reduced pricing. That's liveonlabs.com, L-I-V-O-N, labs.com. In today's world, what would you give to have that ultimate edge, to always function at the highest possible level? That's exactly what the Da Vinci from Ultra Human gives you. Just one tablet a day increases focus, lowers anxiety, enhances social fluency, and improves your mood and drive. It's eight hours strong with no crash. A sharp mind is priceless. And the Da Vinci even comes with a money-back guarantee. Find out more at theultrahuman.net. Make your brain 25 again with the Da Vinci from theultrahuman.net. Use discount. Code SHR10 for 10% off and free shipping. This is the Superhuman Channel, where we use oxygen for the power of good. Uh, you know what it is, what it is when we do what we do. Welcome back. We're talking with Dr. Maldi Pasquale, the man who introduced the modern ketogenic diet into the uh, sports slash strength and conditioning world. His research started over 50 years ago. Uh, he started to influence people about 40 years ago with his books, um, The Anabolic Diet. Uh, so John Peaks wanted me to read this to you, Morrow. And, and I, gotta, I, I know this kind of stuff feels good to you. I know it does. He says, Carl, after reading The Anabolic Diet by Dr. Mario Di Pasquale and Fred Hatfield's Hardcore Bodybuilding, it's clear these men have made a huge contribution to physical culture. I can see their theories in just about every successful program out there. If you get a chance, thank Dr. De Pasquale for me. He was on one of the first Superhuman Radio episodes I ever listened to. I read The Anabolic Diet after listening, it, listening to it. I lost 60 pounds of body fat brought my blood sugar down from around 240 to below 110. I sincerely appreciate his contributions and his time. That's got to make you feel good. Yeah, it does. Actually, I've, I've, had, I've had emails from people who have had some wild success with, with, with the anabolic diet over the years. When I gave a, I was on a, gave a, a presentation at a symposium just last October, and I had people coming up to me then saying, you know, your, your diet changed my life. Which, which is great to hear, you know, because at least you know, I feel I'm contributing something to, to people and, 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 you know, making their life better and more enjoyable, et cetera. I, I want to talk for a moment about supplements in general. And I don't mean just keto supplements. We're going to talk about keto supplements, but I want to talk about other supplements and maybe some misunderstandings that people have on whether or not they actually fit into the keto phase. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. And I, I'm saying that specifically because when you're doing the ketogenic diet properly, you're not always keto. You're phased. There's keto phase and there's not a keto phase. And so whether or not these supplements fit in to the keto phase. So first of all, let's address the these new ketone supplements. They're ketone salts, right? Butyrate attached to a mineral like calcium, potassium, uh, sodium, or, cal uh, or, or uh, magnesium. Or there's even some ketone esters coming forth now. Uh, Patrick Arnold is introducing a new product called Keto Blitz, which doesn't have any salts. And when I say salts, I'm saying potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium. You know, I'm, I'm using it as a generalization. So, so if, if you feel that 40 years into this, we're still learning, then can we say anything definitively about these these new supplements, these emerging supplements? Well, I think there's both, there's both 
you know, there's potentially both positive and negative things. Um, it, you know, it's been shown that uh, athletes who work out hard, elite athletes, uh, especially endurance athletes, uh, do well using uh, uh, the ketones, and they can use more ketones than the average person, even the average person that works out. Um, so going on, for example, the, the uh, uh, fascia shift diet and then using the ketone esters as well might be av advantageous for these people. But you, if, if you think it's a substitute for um, a, a ketogenic phase of a diet, uh, I, I think that there's problems here. First of all, uh, it's been shown that exogenous ketones decreases lipolysis in the body and it actually decreases endogenous ketone production. So in a way, if you're looking at maximizing body composition, just using the, the various ketone um, salts and esters, um, it might not be the best idea. On the other hand, if you're a high-level athlete, using them periodically uh, might, might be a great idea because at that time, you're looking for substrates. You're short on substrates. You're, you're running low on the carbs. You're, laying, you're running low on the glycogen. You're running low on, on, on uh, endogenous ketones. Using the exogenous ketones would likely bolster that effect and perhaps improve performance. Now, having said this, there's very little literature on this. Uh, right. Very, very few studies have been done. I, matter of fact, I've only seen two um, that actually show that it might have a, a, a good effect on, on elite athletes, uh, especially endurance athletes. Um, so, you know, there's it's two sides of a coin. You know, uh, for the average person using that and getting into ketosis where they think they're getting into ketosis, it's not exactly, not the same thing as going through it with the uh, sort of the endogenous mechanism of, of ketone production through the utilization of body fat going through you know, beta oxidation, et cetera. Um, well, let, let, let me let me let me present the supposition. Uh, and 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 this can and so I just dropped. Uh, I I just weighed myself the other day. I'm two hundred and twenty and a half pounds. I was two forty eight at the end of last year. Um, I just dropped a considerable amount of body fat, exclusively body fat. But here's how I use the ketone supplements. Um, I use them to enhance my fast so that I could fast even longer. I could fast 20 hours when I use the ketone supplements because something novel happens when the brain has ketones and satiety increases, hunger decreases. There is, an, there is also evidence that ketone levels influence leptin um, and leptin signaling. Um, for me, it allowed me to fast longer and be fully energetic and engaged mentally and physically from that standpoint, from that standpoint, what's your opinion? Well, I think I mentioned this earlier that uh, there is a gradient uh, of ketones in the body. The brain is able to extract almost to the level of the gradient that's present. You know, the, the ketones enter the uh, uh, transported across the blood brain barrier quite easily. Um, also in the muscle quite easily. And so with muscle, there, there, there tends to be a, a sort of a, a satiation point where they can only take a certain amount of ketones in the muscle. But the brain seems to be able to keep up whatever ketones are present hmm. in, in, in the system. Um, so we have two different, uh, two different tissues. All, tish, all tissues are going to be slightly different as far as the utilization. So I can see where uh, having the ketones with what you were doing with your protocol would actually enhance cognition and, 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 and decrease uh, appetite, have an effect on leptin, et cetera. And I, and, I tra and I trained fasted. So I had my ketones. I went to the gym and I trained. And I train in a, in a way now. I just added cardio in. I do my heavy resistance training first. And then I do uh, some uh, uh, high-intensity interval training uh, after. So I'm actually maximizing uh, the lipolytic effect and also the burning of that fat uh, by doing all that fasted. So do you, do you find that, for example, when you use the ketones, uh, salt or esters, that uh, uh, mentally speaking, yes. um, you're able to work out? Yes, your, yes. The, 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 the fatigue takes longer. I mean, Morrow, I'm 59 years old now, and I know I'm still a spring chicken when, 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 when you and I are talking. So, But I, I'm saying this respectfully. I mean, I'm 59 years old now, and I do three and four movement giant sets with um, 
what would be considered heavyweight for probably 90% of the population. And so I get my heart rate up and then I rest for three minutes and then I do it again. And I, I can tell you, I've done it with the ketones and I've done it without fatigue is pushed out further. There's no doubt in my mind about it. Now, I, 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 can, I can see where, you know, people would feel less exertional um, for the force. In other words, uh, they wouldn't tire as easily because of the effects uh, on the central nervous system. Perceived, the perceived exhaustion is definitely held at bay. Yeah. Uh, well, the perceived exertion is, is something that's tested in a lot of uh, studies. And I think that uh, you're right. I mean, uh, increasing the ketone levels, I mean, doing it, the ketogenic diet and producing natural ketones, you can only go so far in, in, in increasing ketones. After a while, the ketones actually turn off ketogenesis. Interesting. So what you're doing by doing exogenous ketones is you're actually probably, you can double the amount of ketones that you could do naturally. This would have an effect, not necessarily on the muscle, but would have an effect on the brain. Interesting. That must be what's happening then. Okay. Yeah. I want to ask you about some other supplements, whether they are appropriate for the keto phase of, of, a, of a diet. Whey and or dairy protein. A lot of people out there love to say, uh, especially whey isolate, the more refined the dairy protein, the faster it undergo, uh, undergoes gluconeogenesis. Is this, is this much to do about nothing, or do you really think that uh, whey protein and or some of the more refined dairy proteins could actually kick you out of ketosis? They are transformed by gluconeogenic pathways through the Krebs cycle because what they do, you know, things like you know, glutamate, uh, glutamate, and other aspartate and other amino acids actually enter the four carbon cycle, couple up with the acetyl-CoA to, to increase the flux and increase energy levels. Um, whether it kicks you out of, of ketosis is something that um, I don't I don't think it, it may temporarily, but not necessarily. In the long run. Now, what does it mean when, when it kicks you out of ketosis for a short period of term? Does it really mean anything? Does yeah, it, right. You need the amino acids to, to, to increase testosterone levels, to, you know, to, to, to get the growth hormone, IGF-1 levels, decrease cortisol, etc. It's all the things that it does. So, you know, it's one thing against another. I think that it's beneficial. I think taking um, complex amino acids, for example, I think the utilization of uh, of, of whey protein and, and protein while you're training is actually a good thing because first of all, if if you're, you're actually utilizing the carbon units to increase the energy level while you're training, and you're not necessarily forming glucose from it. Um, if you use it before you train, let's say half an hour to an hour before you train, uh, then at that point, that whey protein may well go into uh, uh, sort of a gluconeogenic response, increase glucose levels, and this would a hamper the uh, growth hormone uh, and other responses in the body while you're training. But while you're training itself, I think it's a good thing to use the whey protein. So, it, 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 so, so, so like pre, intra, and post-workout? Different. It's all different, okay? Because the pre-workout, I don't suggest that people use uh, any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, carbohydrate, obviously. Um, uh, and and any, any fast-acting protein. Is usually not a good idea. Not so, like, can, like can pre-workout, a casein, a slow-acting protein, cottage well, cheese. Again, well, as you know, the casein takes longer, and so you have a certain amount of amino acids. Yeah, that, that could do it. By the time you digest enough casein, if you take it half an hour before, you're going to be in your workout. So that, that's not a bad idea. But uh, uh, the whey proteins uh, after workouts, uh, I usually don't agree that people take the, the hydrolyzed proteins or anything like that after workout. Maybe some of the essential amino acids... Uh, Couple together, right. and then later on, wait for a while, and then take 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 the casein, which would be more useful. Remember, we mentioned before about the fact that you want to keep insulin levels relatively low. You, you don't want to fill up the uh, the uh, 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 glycogen levels uh, to any great degree, so that you have the anabolic response for a longer period of time after training. It doesn't cut itself short after an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. Um, I and say that in one of the shows, I think. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Gordon Kelly has a question, and I, and, and I want to pose it because it's important in, in this discussion. He says, how much protein can, can you take? Uh, he's talking about while being in a ketogenic diet or keto, uh, keto state. Would, be, would 200 grams be too much? I think that we need more information from Gordon because are we talking about 
five meals a day. Really, isn't it the isn't it the bolus that affects postprandial uh, 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 gluconeogenesis? I mean, if you're eating 200 grams in one meal, probably yes. But if you're eating 40 grams twice, uh, uh, five times a day, that that's probably not going to affect you uh, negatively. And in fact, uh, as you point out, the protein might might pay, play a bigger role in in staying in, in ketosis than than not. Yeah, no, no, that's true. I mean, I, I think you be careful, folks. It's, it's, uh, it's like everything else; it's, it's, it's timing and it's it's the situation that you're in. <clears throat> You know, I mean, there's so many factors involved. The environment itself is so important as to how the protein is going to affect you. Um, what, what you want to do while you're training is to have the carbon units to be able to form more of the ATP, either through glycolysis, which since you're not taking much carbs in, is going to be more through the uh, glutamine, glutamate, uh, alanine, uh, amino transferases and stuff like that, uh, aspartate. These, these, these will be... Um, uh, sort of Krebs cycle intermediates, which will allow the flux of the Krebs cycle and increase the ATP response so you have more energy while you're training, be able to train longer and harder. So, uh, again, the protein uh, during that period of time is great. Before that, it may be counterproductive because it increases glucose levels, mm-hmm. which will hamper the uh, growth hormone IGF-1 response while you're training. Uh, afterwards, um, you want to keep... Again, the casein is probably a good idea. Individual amino acids, essential amino acids, right after training is, is, is usually a good idea. Uh, keeping carbohydrates very, very low all the while uh, for, as, for as long as you can is also a good thing. Keeping the protein high at the same time, even though you do get some gluconeogenesis, you won't get to the level where it's going to shut off the uh, 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 you know, increasing protein levels, increasing um, uh, uh, the, the and decreasing the catabolic response on the muscle. What you want to do is keep things anabolic, and the best way to do that is to prolong that period after training, which is anabolic. And you can prolong that. You know, uh, it, it takes 24 to 48 hours, actually. So so, so Gordon, Gordon, Gordon just gave us a little bit more information that I want to move on because we have other questions, and I still have a couple questions I need you to answer. He's having two meals a day. He's fasting 16 hours. He's eating two meals a day, so I assume that that is 100 grams per meal, but he's eating whole foods. He's saying he's eating meat and eggs. That's not gonna. That's not gonna speed up gluconeogenesis. That bolus, right? No, 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 no. Because that's that's a very slow, very slow digestive process. Yeah. Um, the, the, you know, whole business about that. I mean, I had I had a question from from someone just uh, today actually. Um, that um, what it, what what he was saying was, is it a good idea to fast? after you work out to keep the GH and IGF-1 levels high. And uh, it's definitely not a good idea to fast after you work out because you're losing, losing out on the, uh, on the anabolic response, the uh, muscle synthesis, uh, the weight, the, the uh, uh, accretion of, of muscle mass. Uh, with fasting, after training is not a good idea. You know, not to take anything in. Take no, because the metabolic machinery. So, Dr. Malin, Dr. Malin Watfi wrote a book that was one of the influencing books for my pursuit of looking at evolution and evolutionary machinery and and performance. And he wrote a book called "Of Doves, Diplomats, and Diabetes." I think I've heard of it. It's an amazing book. It's very expensive. It's a university book, and he's in India. It's like a two hundred dollar book, but. I'm going to distill down the message that he promoted in this book. From an evolutionary perspective, there are hormones in the brain that cause fear. And there are hormones in the brain that overcome fear. And those hormones in the brain that overcome fear are directly controlled by hunger. So early humans had to get so hungry that they were willing to go out and risk their lives and become food in order to find food. And that that risk mechanism changes the way we metabolize and partition nutrition after we've gone out and railed against the machine, caught that animal and, and killed it, and now we're going to eat it. As opposed to when you take that risk mechanism out and you take the hormones that suppress fear that are triggered by hunger out, the body does something completely different. It goes, oh, you know what? We're, we're in high clover, man. We make a lot of fat with this stuff. When you have to go out and work first, and there's risk involved. And when I say this, 
all of us who train in this audience, we go into the gym and we push weight around that our friends go, oh, you're crazy. Why do you train so hard? They don't get it. That the fact that you're a little afraid of that deadlift, the fact that you're a little afraid of that squat, the fact that you're a little afraid that you're going to get stapled to the bench with that bench press contributes to what your body does with the food after you've trained. And Dr. Malin Wafi shows this conclusively. What's the difference between, um, as far as ketone production, what's the difference between, and, and adaptability to exercise, what's the difference between fasting before you, you, uh, you train or having trained uh, prior to having trained? In other words, having done some exercising and then waiting a while and then training or fasting before you train. They found that actually ketone production was, uh, was greater with having exercise before you trained yeah. as against the fasting. Interesting. 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 Well, I have one other question about, well, let me see something. So I have two more questions about SUPS, and then we got to take a break. And then Timothy Hoffer has a great question about raw foods, and he doesn't know your background with Randy Roach, so this is going to be a good question for you. Okay, real quick. Where do you feel like there's a lot of people who are in keto and performance who are using things like cluster dextrin uh, and, and these uh, more advanced carbohydrate um, supplements pre and intra workout because they're burning that they're burning that stuff right off. They're not they're, they're not coming out the end of that workout with a high blood sugar level. They're coming out of that end of that workout with all the blood sugar that they developed has just been run through the fuel machine. What are your positions on uh, pre and intra carbohydrate supplements for the the ketogenic athlete? Well, you know, as I mentioned. I think I think that uh, fast acting protein is probably a better idea. Okay. Um, because first of all, you're able to do the gluconeogenic response with no problem, but also you're providing the uh, substrate for the Krebs cycle. Uh, yeah. To yeah. Produce ATP. So um, the carbs, of course, uh, you're, you're burning them off. Uh, for some people, it might work quite well. It depends. Uh, on in general, though, I would prefer the protein. Okay. Okay. Um, let's just go right to this question then. Uh, oh no! I have one more, one more, one more supplement. Maro, the Italian supplement, wine. Where does that fit on the ketogenic diet? Because I like wine, but I've heard that alcohol turns to ketones. But what about if there's some sugar in the wine too? Well, if there's sugar in the wine, then, then you have to, you know, you have to count that as part of your sugar intake if you're limiting your uh, your, your uh, carbohydrate intake to 20, 30, 40 grams, whatever you do. Um, as far as, as far as the uh, the alcohol, the alcohol is. Uh, is Basically, almost like a ketone. Right. Okay. Uh, it, it, it goes down to the two carbon units as well. Um, and, and, of course, there's a toxic component to it uh, as well with the alcohol. Uh, I enjoy my wine as well. I yeah. Enjoy my wine. Uh, I, that's, a, that's an interesting point because we, we have a new sponsor that's coming aboard. Uh, they are not paying to come aboard. If you guys buy their wine, we make some pennies on it. So I just want to be upfront about this. Um, they're called Dry Farms Wine. And the guy who runs the company, his name is Todd. I can't think of his last name. He's going to be on the show in a week or two. Um, he specifically sources wines from vineyards in Europe that don't water because you end up with a, 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 a more dense, more robust grape that produces low sugar wine. And he has wine that's five grams of sugar in the entire bottle. Interesting. What's the alcohol content? It's also low alcohol because you're starting out with less sugar. So you're going to end up with less alcohol, but there's a higher conversion of sugar to alcohol. So the alcohol that's left behind in the bottle is residual. And obviously it's a dry wine because dried wines typically have less sugar in them. So, I think that's a good idea, actually. You know, having that really dry wine, and, and, and it, it, it'll, it, it'll appeal to some people, and might not appeal to others who like to have a eighteen percent wine. You know? I like wine. I like wine. I can't help yeah. it. I'm Italian. Wine. Uh, my, part of the Mediterranean diet. I drank wine when I was three years old. Well, I was just going to say, I wasn't even. I was in kindergarten. I was four years old, and my mother used to take me to my grandmother and grandfather's house. My grandfather would make pastina. For those of you who don't know. This is a tiny, tiny little macaroni. Like, yeah, I know you do. I know you do. I'm saying 
the Americana is in the audience. <laughs> but pastina is this tiny, tiny little star-shaped pasta. My grandfather would make it, put butter in it, and then he would give me this little glass. It used to be a shrimp cocktail glass that he kept just for me. And he would fill it up with the wine that he made. And I would eat that for lunch, and I'd go to sleep after that. I was such a good little boy when they gave me wine. But I've been drinking wine since I'm four years old. Yeah, I'm the same way. You know, and, and you know, you know what was interesting, actually, is when I was in high school, you know, the kids were really hot about getting alcohol. You know? I mean, they were trying to get people to buy it for them. And I, I'm talking to them, saying, you know what? I got like 60 bottles of wine at home. I don't give a, I don't give a crap about alcohol. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm so used to it. There's part of yeah, How many alcoholics do you see in Italy? You don't see very many. None, good. none. Because it's, it's not taboo. It's not this restrictive. All right. Like the, 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 you know, Victorian kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's been a bugbear for a long time. All right, Timothy Hoffa has a great question. He doesn't know your relationship okay. with Randy Roach. Okay. So he said, I'd love to know Dr. DePasquale's opinion on eating raw foods such as raw eggs and raw meat. I follow this protocol with amazing results. Now, we first started talking about raw, real raw eating with Randy Roach back in 2006 on this show. And so you you influenced Randy, and you were around back in the day when guys like Armantani and Vince Gironda – and all those guys. So where do you stand on the whole raw food uh, and even raw dairy, which is in and of itself, in my humble opinion, manna from heaven? But wh where do you stand on it all? Well, I think, I think raw dairy is just the best one. As long, obviously, as long as it's controlled as far as the effect is taken. Uh, so if you get a good dairy product, you know, under, under ideal conditions, raw dairy is much superior to the pasteurized. Pasteurization destroys a lot of the bioactive components in milk. Um, so, yeah, raw dairy is great. Uh, raw meat is fine. Raw hamburger is not. Um, only unless, unless you're really sure that, that it hasn't been contaminated to some extent. Uh, it's just, you know, minced up meat. But steak, you know, um, I, I, I kind of um, slap it on both sides and then eat it. Yeah, right. It's pretty raw. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so, me too. You know, I, I don't have a problem with that. Same thing with, 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 with eggs. Of course, you know, you're dealing with... Uh, um, the, the there are binders in eggs that uh, that prevent some of the absorption of some of the vitamins, but you know what? It's minimal, and it's really not a problem. Overstated. Problem cholesterol levels, yeah, you know, that's been way overplayed. I mean, I, I I had a patient who ate like twelve eggs a day for like eighty years. Well, Ra Randy, Randy eats. Okay, so I did my first show with Randy Roach in two thousand six, and I did subsequent shows with him and Josh Trentine, and we did shows, and the title of the shows they're still up on my server, is raw food as anabolic as steroids. And this has been the experience of people like Josh Trentine. But Randy was eating raw chicken. He was defying. Now, I'm not recommending people do this because Randy had a farmer, and he would eat a raw chicken that was processed earlier that day. So it's a different story, and you can't do that in today's environment. You will get sick and die. But, but Josh Trentine is still eating raw meat, I eat raw eggs, and I eat raw beef, and I eat a ton of raw salmon. I love raw salmon. It's, at least I get sick. I just grab the six-ounce piece of salmon. I just start biting it and eat it. It's like, it's like a big hunk of sashimi. I love it. I'll tell you something. I think, I think it all depends on, a lot depends on individual taste. I think raw, a lot of the raw foods are superior to cooked foods. Um, some, of the, some of the cooked foods are superior to raw foods because of the fact that it's broken down more, it's easier to digest, et cetera. Um, so it's, it's not it's not a, a black and white, it's more right? Than anything else. And the Italians, we love carpaccio, right? And the and the and the, the Latin people, right. they make ceviche. You you can actually cure cure quote unquote cure raw meats with spices, and that's what carpaccio is. Yeah. For five thousand years. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. I want to take our last commercial break, and this is the last one. And when we come back, I want to address. Uh, uh, lactic acidosis, the presence of ketones and high blood sugar at the same time, uh, and the diabetes model, okay? okay? All right. You couldn't have this conversation with anybody else but Morrow. Stay tuned. <laughs> Quest Keto is making the ketogenic lifestyle more delicious and more convenient than ever. 
The high-fat, moderate-protein, low-carb keto diet has earned a reputation for being complicated. Quest Keto has changed all of that by offering sweet and savory snacks and an entire line of ready-to-go ketogenic meals. They've taken the guesswork out of it for you. From keto cinnamon rolls, pizza, crackers, and more, you can enjoy it all and experience the benefits of this nutritious approach anytime, anywhere. Thanks to Quest Keto. Go to questketo.com to order your meals today. Now, the number one best-selling non-hormonal anabolic agent at PredatorNutrition.com. Progenidrex has established itself as the category killer. If you're having difficulty gaining muscle while staying lean, you owe it to yourself to try Progenidrex. 100% of store reviews rated it at five stars, the highest possible ranking. And today, right now, there are guys pouring their hearts out on the gym with little or nothing to show for it. Don't waste any more time. Go to PredatorNutrition.com today and get Progenidrex, the world absolute best drug-free muscle gainer. 4.6 million years of evolution gave us the blueprint for the perfect protein supplement for humans. So why do all protein supplement manufacturers ignore it? We don't. The first human-appropriate protein supplement is Thrive Advanced. Built around the blueprint of mother's milk, Thrive Advanced contains the amino acids, peptides, micronutrients, enzymes, probiotics, and vitamins that support protein absorption and assimilation. All of our dairy proteins come from happy cows on pastures here in the United States and are low heat pasteurized. You'll never find any artificial sweeteners, additives, or ingredients. You won't even find thickeners or gums in Thrive Advanced. And we back up our label claims with post-production lab analysis that's available right on our website. Visit superhumanradio.com and click the Thrive Advanced banner ad and use code SHR and save 50% off your entire order today. Ever feel like you want something crunchy? From the company that gave us the Quest Protein Bar, now comes the Quest High Protein Potato Chips with 21 grams of high quality protein and only 5 grams of carbs and no artificial ingredients. Just like Quest Bars, you'll feel like you're cheating, but you're not. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Quest High Protein Potato Chip banner ad today and get ready to be satisfied. Thanks to Quest Nutrition, chips just aren't what they used to be. Hey, this is Carl. Start your day just like I do with a high-dose lipospheric vitamin C from Live On Labs. You too can benefit from Live On Labs lipospheric delivery system. No more pills or powders. That's outdated technology. Live On Labs has the world's most efficient vitamin delivery system, period. Learn a lot more today at liveonlabs.com and benefit from their new reduced pricing. That's liveonlabs.com, L-I-V-O-N, labs.com. There is no other olive oil like Papa Vitt's extra virgin olive, not just because of the care and quality that goes into producing it, but also because the unique Nocellata di Belice olive that grows in Sicily is like no other olive in the world. Its spicy yet buttery flavor improves any food it comes in contact with. Higher in antioxidants, Papa Vitt's is raw, unfiltered, and cloudy, and comes from a single orchard owned and operated by the same family. Family for over 100 years. It's the only olive oil Elisa and I will ever use. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Papa Vince banner ad and use code SHR45 and get two bottles of Papa Vince for $45 while supplies last. If you've followed my transformation on Facebook, you've been wondering what I've done to create such dramatic results. One of the things is I've started every day with the Kegenics Prime and then trained fasted and remained fasted till my first meal at 2 o'clock. Kegenics Prime gives me all the energy I need while shutting down hunger. And since the ketones are bound to a quad mineral blend, I'm getting all the magnesium Magnesium, calcium, potassium, and sodium I need to keep my minerals in balance. Try Kigenics Prime yourself. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Kigenics banner ad today and save 25% off your first purchase. Kigenics Prime. I couldn't have done it without it. This is the Superhuman Channel. Doing reps with the weight of the world. Bum, 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 Welcome back. We're talking with Dr. Margie Pasquale. Maul, help me better understand uh, keto lactic acidosis or lactic ketoacidosis. Is it is it a result of the presence of both high blood sugar and high ketone levels that cause this this pathology? It's actually a lot goes wrong. This, 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 this doesn't happen to the ordinary person. It, it's just a diabetic of course, and it, it's a, it's the result of uh, insulin levels that's uh, almost non-existent, which is 
increase which increases ketone production dramatically to the point where it's hyperbolic. In other words, it goes way past what you what you can do with ketone supplement use, um, and to the point where, of course, where it causes uh, it can cause coma and even death. This will not happen on the ketogenic diet. It will not happen with ketone supplementation because the body has ways of uh, decreasing the uh, production of ketones in a, without any kind of consequences. But if you're diabetic, especially type one diabetic, um, and uh, you know the insulin levels are low, uh, then the ketone production is dramatic, and it can go into ketoacidosis. It's, it's, it's a pathological mechanism. So, but how do how do ketones become lactic acid? Because that's what we're talking about here, right? Ketones become lactate. The muscles burn. The the person feels fatigued. They're walking and they feel like they just ran a mile, right? Well, the ketoacidosis is a combination of a ketone body formation and the fact that with, because of the lack of the insulin response, you get increased lactate production. But along with the increased lactate production, is also an because there's an imbalance between NA, NAD and NAD plus. NAD, uh, mm. um, it, it, it's hard it's hard to describe but what happens Hydro, is, hydrogen uh, overabundance of hydrogen ions uh, as a result exactly. that's what you get you get an overabundance of hydrogen ions along with the lactate ordinarily in, in in a normal person lactate is not lactic acid as a matter of fact lactate can be uh, a, 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 you can utilize the the, the uh, uh, proton the the hydrogen the hydrogen ion and actually decrease the level in the body. So lactate is not the villain that people make it out to be. No, because l- lactate is actually a valuable substrate for muscle to work, yeah, right? Well, yeah, it is. Of course, it works the liver, and the liver uses it for gluconeogenesis, for the formation of, uh, of sugar, of glucose. Um, it, it, it's actually it's valuable. And the other thing, too, is usually the lactate is easily transported out of the cell that is, is producing it, like cells of muscle, goes to the liver, Form, uh, the liver forms it back into glucose, which goes back into the circulation, which is used by muscle for the for glycolysis, for the you know when you have when you need the extra exertional uh, uh, energy. So this fits nicely with Kirkland Worley's question. He says, "Carl, because you are discussing lactic acidosis, could you please ask Dr. D to answer a curiosity that I have had for a while? Is there any body composition or let's say performance benefits? I'll just put the performance in there." To supplementing with lactic acid, or I'm going to put this there, a lactic acid donor, um, I would imagine not, but I'm very curious for, for, uh, for what he thinks. Thanks. What do you think? Again, again, the answer to this is the confusion between lactate and lactic acid. Uh-huh. Okay? Lactate, calcium lactate, sodium lactate, whatever kind of lactate you want is a salt. The salt goes into the system. Dissociates into lactate, mm. and, and becomes an it becomes acidic. Goes the, yeah, goes to the kidneys. Kidney then gets rid of the hydrogen ion through the urine and regenerates lactate, which then can go to the uh, to to the liver and be uh, transformed into glucose through gluconeogenesis. So it's a cycle that it goes through. So lactate is a good thing. There's no way that you're going to take straight like lactic acid, okay? It doesn't taste very good. <laughs> but, uh, but, but wait a minute. Okay, so um, all these nitric oxide pump products, do they increase lactic acid or do they leverage lactic acid? I think they more leverage it. You know, I'm, you know I'm not a nitric oxide. Uh, no, I know. I know. In fact, there's a study that's done right here in Kentucky by the University of Kentucky probably 10 years ago that shows that increasing intramuscular uh, nitric oxide actually reduces miles, uh, 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 myofibril contractile force. Yeah, it makes it. But it also decreases testosterone. <laughs> yeah. A lot of other interesting. I interesting. Mean, uh, uh, even arginine, for example, taken in, in moderate doses is very, very constructive because it's used for amino acids for, for production of protein. Right. It has a lot of other uses as well. And the nitric oxide it does produce doesn't become on a toxic level, as far as I'm concerned. But some of the uh, nitrites and nitrates that are being pushed now uh, can cause real problems, especially when you combine them with with the, with amino acids and stuff. Mm-hmm. It causes even more problems. You know, there's, there's huge misconceptions. I mean, we have to have a talk on, on glutamine, which I, I consider a pyotropic amino acid. People have been down, sort of, sort of, sort of been down on glutamine now for a while. But it's actually the most efficient and best amino acid that you could take, and we need a whole show on that. Okay, well, we'll do that. Uh, we'll, we'll book that uh, later today. So, but here, here's my question. 
Is there anything we can do? Because, because lots of indications about occlusion training, vascular occlusion training, is that intramuscular growth factors go through the roof in the presence of lactic acid. And so anything that speeds lactic acid production will in, does, in fact, increase those hormones and increases hypertrophy. This has been shown over and over again. So my question would be, aside from the congestion of blood in the muscle, which rapidly increases lactic acid production, are there supplements that would leverage and increase lactic acid production? Anything that that um, that stops the, uh, uh, the glycolysis at the level of the Krebs cycle um, would increase lactic acid. Okay. Increase lactate and lactic acid. Okay. So um, any kind of intensive exercise or you depend on glycolysis for the energy levels of ATP because ATP produced by by glycolysis is much much faster produced uh, than it is going through the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. Etc. Um, so that would be one of the ways. Methods of doing that would be, like you were saying, for example, to, to, to uh, decrease the amount of oxygen in the system because the uh, Krebs cycle needs oxygen to function to make right. ATP. Glycolysis does not. Glycolysis then results in the lactic, lactate, lactic acid combination, and that would be one way of doing that. That's why when, when you limit the amount of oxygen to any tissue, or if you go into a hyperbaric uh, a chamber uh, where oxygen levels are decreased, and then exercise in that chamber, then you'll get the uh, the, the lactic acid response and the increased uh, um, uh, myofibrillar pro protein uh, uh, that, that occurs secondary to it. But, but one interesting thing about this is all the studies I've seen have been very short-term studies. Mm -hmm. What happens in the long term when when when, when that's done? Does does in fact your body then get used to that lactic acid increase? And actually, the hypertrophy stops, and the whole thing is useless after a while. Yeah, and and, and if we know if we know anything about adaptation of our human body, which is one of the most advanced, we are one of the most advanced adaptive creatures on the planet. Exactly. And, and anything you do for long term stops working. We know that. We we we're talking about the keto diet for that reason today, because if anything you do long term stops working. Well, the thing is, most of these most of these studies are short term studies. Yeah. And yeah. They're very particular short-term studies. So the conditions under those studies wouldn't be conditions that most people would have uh, yeah. you know, in, in the training setting. Also, what's the long-term effect? We don't know what the long-term effects are. So, you know, the, the uh, decreasing the oxygen supply to any part of the body may have adverse consequences down the line. Right. Uh, we have one last question from a listener that I have to ask. Omar Lugo, he's been a longtime fan of the show. And he said, could the keto diet still be implemented and be effective for someone post-bariatric procedure or surgery? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, 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 but with those individuals, don't you run the risk of nutrient deficiencies? Shouldn't they be eating a more varied diet? Because don't they already have compromised nutrient uptake? And in some cases, uh, uh, some nutrients just don't even get processed. They just come out. Mm. Idea. Right, right. So for them, for them either, for them either, right? Yeah, for them either. yeah, yeah. For short term, and, and, and for them, I would I would suggest a phase shift diet if they're going to do anything like that. Yeah, but they maintain all aspects. Um, and, and, you know, they have a choice. Your body has a choice at that point. It's adaptable. It can go one way or go another way without producing a lot of adverse effects or side effects. Even. Where can people buy the anabolic diet? So Omar Lugo needs to read the anabolic diet and use that because it's basically the phase shift ketogenic diet where can people still buy the book well okay the anabolic solution is actually uh, an extension it, it's the modified it's, anabolic diet it, yeah, yeah it actually has more than the anabolic diet uh and that can be a bought off my site as an ebook or as a book um i'm actually working on revise the fourth edition of these books right now so we'll have uh, with a lot more theory and a lot more explanation. The original anabolic diet was was made for um, just a quick way of getting into the phase shift diet. You know, it didn't have a lot of research behind it. I just kind of was like a guidebook. Here's what you do. 
and it's going to produce some results. The anabolic solution, I put more theory into it and, and, and expanded it and put, put in a the anabolic solution bodybuilder has a list of foods, for example, that are acceptable and not acceptable under different phases. Um, so th there's differences, but the new book will be probably twice the size of the old books because of all the differences that have taken place, and it'll include huge sections on genetics and genetics and the environmental changes that you can implement to make the diet more successful. I think we've covered a lot of ground. What do you think? Yeah, I think we have. And we, and if anything we did miss, you guys can email me at onair at superhumanradio.net. The new website is going to be superhumanradio.net. The only thing that's changing is the .net. Um, so if you have a question on air at superhumanradio.net, I'll get it along to Dr. D and we'll have him back on to answer your question specifically. But I think that people in the keto community need to abandon this mentality that keto is all you need. I'm, unless unless you're, you're dealing with a cancer or brain cancer, whether your ketogenic therapeutic diet has gotten your cancer to, uh, to go into remission or stop, stop progressing, or if you have seizures, epilepsy and seizures, you know, or, 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 or if you're, you're someone who's fighting an autoimmune disorder and you find out that the ketogenic diet makes all those symptoms subside, and as soon as you stop eating that way, you get sick again. Those people are using the diet as a therapy for a narrow purpose. That's different. That's different. It depends on the person, their makeup, et cetera. I mean, it's being used for dementia. Yeah. Cancer, yeah. Epilepsy. That's different. That's different. Yeah. Et cetera, including rheumatoid arthritis, et cetera. And some of the studies show some success, some don't. So here we're looking at variability in the epigenome of the person who's undergoing any of these diets and the effect it's going to have. For example, it depends on whether or not the cancer that you have is totally dependent on uh, the glycolytic pathway, <laughs> right. not on the crest cycle pathway. Right. So right. You, the, you go on a ketogenic path there, you have to starve the, uh, the cancer. Now, unfortunately, and this is unfortunate, the cancer has an ability to change its substance. It's called, it's called evolution. They're, they're, they're evolving too. <laughs> yeah. They're evolving, and they're starting to be able to use some of them. Okay, you get, you get an initial spike because you changed the macronutrient composition of the diet, and the cancer is used to one macronutrient, which is uh, you know, glucose. Um, so you cut that out, and all of a sudden, the cancer says, hey, you can change, I can change. I'm going to mutate. I'm going to use fatty acids. Methionine, glutamine, fatty acids. Yeah, yeah. Leucine. There's some can. There's some cancers that they love the leucine. And I, you know what I think it is too, Doctor D. I had this image when you were just talking, and I thought, you know, if you have cancer that likes a certain substrate, and it's actually grown under the influence of that substrate. It has the same polymorphic effect that we do through evolution when our ancestors ate the same foods all the time. And all of a sudden you change foods and you don't feel so well, but maybe some generations later you become adapted to that food source. So the cancer that grew up under the influence of, of glucose dies when you starve it of the glucose. But the new cancer cells that are growing up in the environment of low glucose, because don't forget, they're, they're still, they are, they're going, they're, they're experiencing the same evolutionary selection pressure. They're surviving because they don't need glucose. See, the, only way, the only way you can deal with that is if you have a cancer, for example, that, uh, that, that you feel is, is glucose dependent, and then you change the diet into a ketogenic diet, you get a respite from the cancer, and then it comes back again. What you need to do is you need to do an epigenome and metabolome um, at various times during the cancer to determine just what the cancer is doing and then counteract it. In that right. way, you might be able to wipe it out completely, but we're a little away from that. All right, look, Dr. D, thank you so much. You've been very, very generous with your time today, and thank you to the audience uh, for being generous and asking great questions, and we will. Uh, I'm off tomorrow, so uh, I'll talk to everybody Monday. Tomorrow we'll be working on the website, getting it back up. Uh, so be patient, and once the website is up, I need people to let everybody know that the uh, URL changed to .net. And, of course, Dr. Dr. D, give your website again real quick. Well, there's two of them. The best one now, uh, especially for updated information. On, now, the supplements that I have, uh, I do a very detailed study on, on, on the ingredients, and you'll find a lot of very useful information on amino acids, various carnosine, uh, all the stuff that's up to date uh, on the www.metabolicdiet.com. 
that's where to get the information on the supplements and also all the ingredients that you might be interested in would be in the supplement uh, information. Some of the supplement uh, PDFs are like 40 pages long. Um, uh, the other site is www.moralmd.com, M-A-U-R-O-M-D.com, and uh, that's going to be superseded probably in the next uh, three to four weeks, hopefully. There you go. All right, look, we're pulling the plug. We've gone long, and we will have Dr. D back on. Thanks so much, Moral. Thank you. Tell Bonnie I said hello, please, okay? Okay. All right, and we'll see everybody Monday.